Hello, I'm Dr. Kim Yong Jin. We have used the casket quite a lot, which is optimized for sinus surgery. Casket is one of the best sellers of Austin. However, in the maxillary posterior region, where we need to do the sinus lift using crystal approach, if we use the digital guide surgery system, one guide system, there is a concern for perforation of the sinus membrane. So let me introduce the one cast kit, which can be used for the sinus lifting with the crystal approach and the digital guided implant surgery in the posterior region of maxilla. As you can see on the left, if you place an implant in the posterior maxilla, and the residual bone height to the sinus floor is limited for crystal approach. We used to use Austin's CAS kit. Also in complete edentulous patient, posterior mandible or anterior maxilla, existing one guide kit can be used for the placement However, for crystal approach in the posterior maxilla, when we need to use one guide kit, what do we need to do? The shortest the drill in the one guide kit is 6 millimeters. So the residual bone height to the sinus floor, if it is less than 6 millimeters, there is a concern for sinus membrane perforation. How can we use the advantages of one guide kit and cast kit. That was the concept why one cast kit was developed. It incorporates the advantages of the cast kit and it also ensures the accuracy of digital guided surgery. That is, the one cast kit is the combination of one guide system and cast kit we talked about one MS kit. One guide template itself is completely different from one MS template in terms of the offset lens, guide hole sizes, and also the guide barrel sizes. However, one cast system is designed to apply one cast kit through the guide holes of one guide. So one cast system can be understood as the system that can be used with one guide system. One cast kit looks like this. It is divided into two parts just like the one guide kit. The guide hole sizes are two different sizes, so they are divided into the left and right parts just like one guide kit. To place an implant with a diameter of 4.0 or 4.5 millimeters, drilling should be done through the guide hole of 5.1 diameter. Such drill systems are located on the left. When we place a 5.0 diameter implant, a guide hole of 5.8 millimeter diameter needs to be formed. So the drills with the guide barrel of 5.7 mm diameter are located on the right with the marking of W. First, initial drills. The initial drills in the one guide kit have multi steps. The initial drills in the one cast kit are the 2.2 mm diameter straight drills. The diameter of the initial drills is 2.2 mm because the bone quality in the posterior maxilla is soft and the multi-step drills may reduce the crystal cortical bone too much, which is very unfavorable for the primary stability of an implant. And the initial drills in the casket is 2.2 millimeters, and that is incorporated. There are two lengths when it comes to initial drills, 7 millimeters and 10 millimeters. However, the first drilling should be done with a 7 mm drill. Even though the residual bone height to the sinus floor is more than 7 mm, you should not use a 10 mm long drill directly for lack of guide contact. If you look at the bottom figures, you will understand. In the posterior maxilla, the gingiva is very thick. Let's assume it is 3 to 3.5 mm thick. 
10.5 mm is the offset length of one guide, that is the distance from the top of an implant and to the top of the guide hole. Even without considering the implant placement depth, subcrustal depth, if the gingiva is 3 to 3.5 mm thick, the thickness of the guide hole is about 7 to 7.5 mm. If we use the 10 mm long drill directly, what happens? As you can see in the figure on the left, the contact between the guide barrel and inside of guide hole should be made, but if you use 10 mm drill, the contact cannot be achieved. As you can see on the right, there's no contact between the guide barrel and inside of the guide hole. It leads to the initial drilling, not at the center of the guide hole, so the guide barrel is not guided by the inside of the guide hole, lowering the accuracy of the initial drilling. So even though residual bone height is more than 7 millimeters to the sinus floor, the initial drilling should be done using the 7 millimeter long drill. Then you can use the 10 millimeter drill. The bone contact can be secured in the 1MS kit. The implant to be placed is more than 8.5 millimeters or 10 millimeters. The initial drilling should be done using 8.5 millimeter drill for double contact concept. The same concept is applied here. That is the most important point here. Next, let me talk about one cast drill. One guided drill adopts one to two tapered drill and on top of the drills, the guide barrel is attached, which is guided through the guide hole. It is the same for one cast drills. Cast drills in the cast kit are adopted and they are connected to the guide barrels. One cast drills have two different lengths, 7.0 and 10 millimeters for each diameter drill. 7 millimeters and 10 millimeters, just like the initial drills that I mentioned before. As explained before, even the residual bone height to the sinus floor is 7 millimeters or more. Make sure 7 millimeter long one cast drill should be used first for the drilling followed by 10 mm one cast drill. To maintain the double contact concept, the apical bone contact of the one cast drill and the other contact between the one cast drill's guide barrel and the top of the guide hole. The concept of double contact should be remembered for accurate drilling, the characteristics of one cast drills are the same as cast drills. The rounded end design is adopted. So when an one cast drill penetrates into the sinus floor, conical bone lid is made. So the end of the drill does not touch the sinus membrane directly, minimizing the perforation of sinus membrane. This is how it is used. So there are two lengths of a drill, 7 millimeters and 10 millimeters, and you need to use 7 millimeter drill first. In the existing cast kit, cast drill is connected to the stopper, so one cast drills are connected to the one cast stoppers. At the bottom, there are stoppers. Cast kit has one type of stoppers with one diameter. As cast drills have the same diameter connecting part to the stoppers. But in one cast kit, there are two guide barrel types. So there are two different stoppers for the same length, left and right. The stopper lengths are shown below. Stoppers are connected to the top of one cast drills. The slot should be at the top. That's how it should be connected. The depth of actual drilling can be controlled. You need to drill until the bottom of the stopper touches the top of the guide hole. But when we use one cast kit, the stopper system is quite confusing. 
The characteristics of drills are the same, which doesn't require further explanation. But this stopper system is completely different from the stopper system of the casket. The stoppers in the casket, the marked numbers are the drilling depth. For example, 2mm stopper of casket is connected to cast drill. The actual drilling depth is 2 millimeters, so the number marked on a stopper means the drilling depth when the stopper is connected to a cast drill. However, the stoppers in the one cast kit do not indicate actual drilling depth. That indicates actual stopper length. A little bit confusing, you need to calculate at the bottom. There are two numbers indicated where stoppers are positioned, and there is one number in some cases. As you can see, the actual length of stopper is indicated. When a stopper is connected to a drill, actual drilling depth is less than the stopper length. Let's take an example. If we use a 3 mm stopper, the stopper's actual length is 3 mm. Then, the 3 mm long stopper is connected to 7 mm long one cast drill. 7 minus 3 is 4, so actual drilling depth is 4 mm. The number at the top in blue indicates the actual drilling depth when a stopper is connected to 7 mm drill. What about connecting 3 mm stopper to 10 mm one cast drill? 10 minus 3 is 7, so the actual drilling depth is 7 mm. The red number at the bottom indicates the actual drilling depth when the stopper is connected to a 10 mm drill. In the cast kit, the drills have the same length, but there are 7mm and 10mm drills in one cast kit, so the numbers on the stoppers are not actual drilling depth, but actual stoppers length, so it requires calculation. If I use 7mm or 10mm stoppers, actual drilling depth can vary. Next, depth gauge. Depth gauge is used to check whether sinus floor is penetrated or not. Its length is the same as the 10 mm long drills. If you use the stopper, the actual insertion depth would be 10 minus the length of the stopper. It goes through the guide hole. So, if 3 mm long stopper is connected to the depth gauge and inserted through the guide hole, the actual drilling depth into bone is 10 minus 3, 7 mm. It may seem a little bit confusing. Another difference between casket and one casket is the stopper system. If you get used to it, there'll be no problem clinically using it. There are depth gauges at the bottom. Flattening drills. We cannot place implants only with one casket. Only crystal approach can be done with one casket. No mount drivers or fixture drivers that need to be used to place actual implants. They are in the one guide kit, so you need to prepare one guide kit and one cast kit. Accessories hydraulic lifters, silicon tube, bone carrier, and bone condenser, just like the cast kit, and they are at the bottom. How to apply that clinically? Let me explain it in more details. Surgical sequence needs to be remembered that will help in applying it clinically. If you have used the casket, the stoppers, if you get used to the stoppers, 
one cast kit can be used easily. Digital guided implant surgery has advantages in crystal approach. If the sinus floor has inclined plane, when an implant is to be placed there, the maximum and minimum residual bone heights can be identified. When sinus floor is inclined, mesiodistally or buccolingually. And the initial drilling depth should be one millimeter shorter than the minimal residual bone height. When we use the crystal approach before penetrating into the sinus floor, we need to expand it first. So the initial drilling depth should be one or two millimeters shorter than the minimal residual bone height. The guided surgery is very accurate, so the initial drilling one millimeter shorter than minimal residual bone height is sufficient. We need to completely penetrate into sinus floor when placing an implant to have the apex of the implant engage in the cortical bone of the sinus floor properly. So the final drilling depth should be up to the maximal residual bone height. For example, the sinus floor is not flat. The maximal and minimal residual bone heights can be measured. Based on that, initial drilling depth should be identified as well as the drilling depth of final drilling before operation. The available bone height to the sinus floor is 4 millimeters in this case. The initial drilling depth should be 3 millimeters. How can we do that? The 7 millimeter drill. An initial drilling depth should be 3 millimeters. Then stopper length should be 4 millimeters. And we need to calculate here if gingiva is thick, tissue punch needs to be used to make an entry point in the soft tissue to remove the soft tissue. After that, 2.2 diameter by 7 millimeter long initial drill should be used for the initial drilling. The initial drilling depth should be limited to 3 millimeters. That requires 4 millimeter stopper. In this case, for 3 millimeter drilling, if we use a 3 millimeter stopper, what happens? 7 minus 3 is 4. So the sinus floor can be penetrated and the membrane can be perforated, so the stopper length should be calculated. 4 mm stopper is connected for the drilling. The drilling depth would be 3 mm. Just like the sequence of cast kit, expansion should be done first. A stopper is connected to 7 mm one cast drill. The one cast drill is 7 mm long and the stopper is 4 mm, so the drilling depth is 3 mm. After the initial drilling, we need to check whether sinus floor is penetrated, so depth gauge is connected to the stopper. As I said before, depth gauge is 10 mm long, therefore the insertion depth to be 3 millimeters. 7 millimeter stopper should be connected to the depth gauge. 10 minus 7 is 3. 3 millimeter would be the insertion depth. If the sinus floor is not penetrated, we need to do further expansion. So 2.8 or 3.1 by 7 millimeter long cast drill is connected to the 4 millimeter stopper. The drilling is only for expansion. Then the next step, 3.6 or 3.8, one cast drill. And the length should be 7 millimeters and 4 millimeter stopper needs to be connected for drilling depth of 3 millimeters for expansion. Just like cast drill, the cutting drilling speed is around 800 RPM. If bone is more soft, you can use lower speed. Now expansion is completed. Then what do we need to do? 
Now, drilling should advance one millimeter at a time to penetrate into sinus floor. As we used four millimeter stopper before, now we need to use three millimeter one. Generally, when we used cast kit, stoppers used in ascending order three, four, five, and six millimeters according to the numbers on the stoppers, but the sequence should be the other way around. In one cast kit, it should be descending order. So four millimeter stopper is used, then three millimeter stopper, seven minus three is four. So next, the depth gauge. The drilling depth is four millimeters. For 10 millimeter depth gauge, six millimeter stopper should be inserted or connected for the insertion depth of four millimeters. If the sinus floor is not penetrated, we need to increase one millimeter. I said the stoppers need to be used in descending order, so two millimeter stopper should be used. Seven millimeter long one cast drill is using two millimeter stopper for five millimeter drilling depth, so we need to advance until the sinus floor is penetrated. What about after drilling 5 mm depth? The depth gauge should have the same 5 mm insertion depth. 5 mm stopper would make it as 10 minus 5 is 5. So the depth gauge is connected to the 5 mm stopper if sinus floor's hard floor is not felt. Then the bottom of the stopper connected to the depth gauge is in touch with the top of the guide hole. The sinus floor is completely penetrated. Then the sinus floor penetration is completed. Next is the hydraulic lifting. For hydraulic lift, guide template needs to be removed and the hydraulic lift tip should be connected. For the hydraulic lift, the newly launched one cast kit has the hydraulic lift tools that can be directly connected to the guide hole that is an upgraded system. If you have not purchased the one cast kit yet, you'd better buy the newly upgraded system. If you have the old version, the hydraulic lift tool can be replaced with the new upgraded ones. Inserting or removing the guide can be cumbersome, especially when the guide is fixed with anchor pins. Removing the pins would be very cumbersome. Hydraulic lift can be done in a standard way gradually. 0.5 cc is inserted and removed. 1 cc is inserted and removed for the lift. After that, bone grafting can be carried out. In the new version, the bone grafting can be directly using the guide hole, that is the upgraded tool. Bone grafting is done with proper amount of graft. Next, the template is positioned or the existing position. The template can be used to place an implant. To place an implant, no mount driver and fixture drivers in the one guide kit need to be used. Then, implant placement is completed. Depending on the primary stability, a cover cap or a healing abutment can be connected before finishing. Let me review a case of Dr. Kim Gi Sung, whom I respect. At number 26, a single implant is placed using one cast kit on the CT, oculolingually, minimal and maximal residual bone height can be measured. Based on that, initial drilling depth and final drilling depth are determined. One guide template is fabricated and positioned. A stopper is connected to on one cast drill. According to the surgical sequence, drilling is done, sinus floor is penetrated, a hydraulic lift is done, and bone grafting is done. Seven millimeters should be used first, that is the most important thing. And the no mount driver in the one guide kit is used to place the implant. And fixture driver is used to control the depth. 
The primary stability was very good, and healing abutment is connected before finishing the surgery. As you can see, due to hydraulic lift, sinus membrane is lifted at the same time. Bone graft material is properly positioned below the sinus membrane. The implant position is in the ideal position, just like the planned positions. Panorama after the delivery of final prosthesis, CT. Ossification in the sinus is progressing very well and the final prosthesis is in good shape. In this lecture, we talked about the one cast kit which has the benefits of cast kit and one guide kit. The stopper system is the difference between this and the casket. The stopper system is different from the existing casket. If you keep that in mind, you will be able to use the one casket for the crystal approach rather easily. The biggest change in the trend when it comes to the implant surgery is digital guided surgery. For guided surgery, many implant companies have launched their own guide systems. And the one guide system is what I prefer to use. Characteristics of one guide system was introduced in the previous lecture. In the areas like uh, anterior mandible, the one guide system cannot be used. Uh, so one MS kit was uh, introduced just like that. In the posterior maxilla, crystal approach, sinus lifting, and one guide system can simultaneously be used with the help of one cast kit. That is the attractiveness of the kit. I hope this lecture is helpful for you to clinically apply one cast kit in your clinical cases. Thank you for your attention.